Section 6. Load testing web applications. In this section, we will explore how web performance and load testing is supported in Visual Studio 2017. We will record a web performance test and further customize it using the provided editor. We will create a load test from multiple web performance tests and configure some additional parameters. We will try running the load test locally and in Azure. We will review the collected test results. Creating a performance test. In this video, we will focus on web performance tests. We will first record the test with the available tooling. We will look at the generated test and the options to manually modify it later. We will try out the created test by running it locally. Web performance testing is only supported in Visual Studio 2017 Enterprise Edition. There is a dedicated project template available for the performance and load tests. As in most newly created projects in Visual Studio, there is already an empty item generated for us. Conveniently, it's a web performance test, just the one we need. Let's first take advantage of the built-in test recording functionality. We will navigate to the default ASP.NET MVC application, which we have already published in Azure when we wanted to test it from the build server. The visited URL was added to the recording. When we click on a link, that URL is also recorded. This is true for any action we do on the web page. When we're done with the scenario we want to test, we stop the recording. At first sight, performance tests appear similar to user interface tests, as they both test fully deployed web applications. However, where user interface tests use the browser to interact with a working web application, including the JavaScript scripts, performance tests only execute web requests to the server and measure response times. This explains the structure of the recorded test. It consists of three URLs. Each one of them has properties that describe the web request in detail, such as HTTP method or cache control. For example, a property worth noticing is think time. It tells how long the pause should be before this request will be executed. This value was recorded along with everything else, but you might want to set it to zero. Additional properties are visible in the tree view, such as headers, but also query string parameters and form parameters. All of these properties can be fully edited in the editor, other requests can also be added. Validation rules play the role of assertions. Both response URL and response time goal are set in the properties of each individual request. Only additional validation rule properties are edited here. For example, to set time goal for a request, we select the request and set the value of its corresponding property. Value 0 means that the response time is not being checked. With everything set up, we can now run the test locally to make sure it behaves as expected. We can check details about each request, status code, response times, request made, and response received. In this video, we created our first web performance test.